Today I will show you everything that you need to know about induction motors and asynchronous motors. Quick and easy. Hi, my name is Markus and hello together here from Berlin. I will show you the design and the different types of induction motors. We look at how induction motors work, how their characteristic curves look like, with and without an inverter. And finally, we take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of different induction motors. So let's get started. Induction motors are also often called asynchronous motors and are shortened with ASM or IM. Asynchronous motors or induction motors belong to the group of AC motors. Compared to synchronous motors, asynchronous motors do not need an inverter or a power electronic. But I will show you why it is better to use an inverter. Induction motors can be divided into two different types, one with slip ring rotor and one with square cage rotor which is used in more than 90% of the applications. The square cage rotor consists of a cage of bars, which are made of aluminium or copper. The bars are short circuit at the upper and lower ends with rings of the same material. To reduce torque oscillations from the rotor, the bars and the plates are usually slightly twisted. This also has the advantage that the rotor runs quieter and smoother. The stator, like the rotor, consists of several thin metal sheets, which are connected to each other by a very thin insulation layer. The layer between the individual sheets insulate them from each other to reduce the losses in the sheets. You can differentiate between single phase and three phase induction motors. For household devices such as washing machines and refrigerators, mostly one phase induction motors are used. In the industry and electric vehicles, mainly three-phase induction motors are used. In three-phase electrical motors, the stator has three windings, L1, L2 and L3, which are thematically displaced from each other. The three windings can be connected to a star or a delta. Therefore, the three-phase induction motor usually has three-phase connections, which are labeled with U, V and W. The second type of induction motor is a slip ring rotor. Instead of short circuit cage, the rotor has windings. The windings in the rotor are connected to three slip rings, on which brushes grind. The brushes make a contact with variable resistors, which are located outside of the rotor. The current in the rotor can be adjusted via the resistors, and therefore the torque can be controlled. Do you need an inverter or a power electronic to operate the induction motor? It depends on the application and the place of the operation. For the operation in a production machine or a pump, you theoretically do not need an inverter. However, these days induction motors are usually operate with an inverter. The reason for this is that with the inverter, you can increase the efficiency and the torque. In the household, single phase induction motors are mostly used for refrigerators and washing machines without an inverter. If you want to use induction motors in an electric vehicle, you will definitely need an inverter. The inverter in the vehicle converts the DC current of the high voltage battery into an AC current for the electric motor. Induction motors belong to the group of AC motors and require an alternating current or a three-phase current. So you either use an AC current directly from the power outlet or convert it into a higher or lower frequency with an inverter. When the three-phase AC voltage is connected to the motor terminals U, V and W, the current flows in the windings, which result in the rotating magnetic field. At first, we stop only the rotation of the magnetic field and insert a cage of aluminium or copper into the magnetic field, with the result that the torque of the rotor is still zero. And now we let the magnetic field of the starter rotate, but we still hold the rotor. The rotating magnetic field induced a voltage in the bars. Because the conductor bars are short circuit to each other at the lower and upper ends, the induced voltage produced a current flow in the bars. The short circuit current in the bars generate the magnetic field in the rotor, which tries to follow the magnetic field of the starter. This produced a torque in the direction of the magnetic rotating field of the stator. If the rotor is now let go, the torque accelerates the mass of the rotor, so the rotor tries to reach the speed of the stator. But it can never do so. But why? 
When the rotor rotates at the same speed as the stator, no voltage is induced in the bars of the rotor. Therefore, no current flows in the bars that could generate a torque. The rotor must therefore always have a lower speed than the stator, so that the induction motor generates a torque. The difference between the stator and the rotor speed is called slip speed. As we have seen, we can generate a torque from stillstand without an inverter or a power electronic. The asynchronous motor can be used as a motor or a generator. In motor mode, the magnetic field of the stator always rotates faster than the rotor. In other words, the rotor runs asynchron to the magnetic field of the stator. Let's take a look now at the characteristic curve of different induction motors. First of all, in an operation without an additional inverter. This means that the rotation frequency of the stator is constant over the entire speed range. Usually this is 50 Hz or 60 Hz, depending on which country you are from. The maximum speed of the induction motor is limited by this frequency, if no inverter is used. As you can see in the characteristic curve of the square cage with round bars, that the torque is very low in the lower speed range. To increase the torque in the lower speed range, a current displacement rotor can be used. For example, rectangular bars are used instead of round bars. This increases the resistance of the rotor in the lower speed range and therefore also the torque. Another way to increase the torque in the lower speed range is to use a slip ring rotor. With a slip ring rotor, the resistance is changed by externally variable resistors. In the lower speed range, the resistance is increased externally and by that increasing the torque. The best way to use the full potential of the induction machine is by using an inverter. By using an inverter, the rotational frequency of the stator can be adjusted. This allows a constant torque to be achieved over a long speed range. The inverter takes a 50 Hz or 60 Hz from the three-phase network and converts it into an output frequency depending on the motor speed. I have put the link in the description where you can find a direct comparison of all characteristic curves. Now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of induction motors with slip ring rotor and with square cage rotor with and without an inverter. The main advantage of induction motors with slip rings is a higher torque in the lower speed range and the lower starting current. However, the additional cost of the slip rings and also the production of the rotor with the windings is significant. Therefore today, the slip ring rotor is only used for very large electrical motors where the inverter would be too expensive. The main advantage of square cage induction motors are the low production costs for the rotor compared to a permanent magnet synchronous motor, short PMSM. Only reluctance motors are cheaper. You can find a video about this in the description. The induction motor is very robust against high temperatures. You do not have to worry about demagnetization of magnets, like with the PMSM. The main disadvantage is the low starting torque and the low efficiency if you do not use an inverter. With an inverter, the induction motor can achieve similar high efficiencies as a PMSM at high speeds. Peak power and peak torque are also very good because you do not have to worry about demagnetization of the magnets. The continuous power can be a problem if the generated heat in the rotor cannot be removed properly. I hope you enjoyed the video. Share it, like it and please subscribe to our channel. If you have any more questions about induction motors, just write them in the comments. I will answer your questions and help you out. Thank you for watching and I wish you all an excellent efficiency.